I wish to talk today about the parable of the widow and the judge in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. It says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuing coming to me she wearies me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him? Though he bears long with them, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? There was this man named George Mueller. <laughs> He lived around the 1800s, and he prayed for a friend to come to Christ, and he kept on persisting in that prayer for his friend to, to become a Christian. He never saw this man saved in his lifetime, but yet, in George Mueller's funeral, when George Mueller was dead, his friend gave his life to Christ. The thing is, we have to be persistent in our prayer life. God might not answer our prayers the first time we pray. But if it is his will, God will answer it. God has three ways of answering our prayers. First, by telling us flat, no, I'm not going to answer it. It's not my will. Second, is by telling us, here I'm answering it and third is by telling us wait and there's occasions where we have to continue in prayer in Daniel Daniel 10 it took him three weeks um, in Daniel 10 Daniel fasted for his prayer to be answered. He fasted for three weeks. It says in those days. I Daniel. Daniel 10 verse 2, 3. In those days I Daniel was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all. So three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now what happens? What happens? Angel goes up to Daniel and he tells him this. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. I just want you to understand this. 21 days it took for that prayer to be answered. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. When Elijah asked God for, for rain again. What happens? It says in verse 42 of chapter 18. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees, 
and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go up, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So, by sending him seven times, you could just imagine Elijah probably prayed those seven times. Asking God, God send that rain. Send that rain. It's been three years and a half. Send that rain. We also see in Second Corinthians 12, <coughs> Paul, when he was given the thorn in the flesh, Verse 7 through 10, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I, I pleaded with God the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is significant to thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boost in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Notice this. Three times Paul had to pray. For that thorn to be taken out of his flesh. Oh, there's there's occasions where we have to pray more than just once for God to answer a prayer. Sometimes we have to keep on knocking at his door. And that's what the parable is about. It's about us persisting in prayer. Brothers and sisters, prayer is our life source. Prayer is our blood. If if we stop praying. We stop living. The enemy knows if he can stop you from praying, he has you. As a matter of fact, it's those moments when you feel not like praying. It's those moments that you should be expecting an attack from the devil. And all those times that you don't pray and you get those attacks, you're not ready for it. And you fall on Flat on your face in a sin or a situation happens and you don't know how to deal with. So we're called to pray, brothers and sisters. We're called to pray and faint not. And not to lose hearts. He spoke this parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. A widow. That widow kept on insisting. That widow kept on knocking. Finally, the judge gave up. And sometimes we have to do that with God. <coughs> we refuse to do it with our earthly parents when, when, when we wanted something from them. We just kept on bugging them. Mommy, Daddy, I want this. I want this. I want this. Till finally, your mom says, okay, I'll get it for you. Or or she'll tell you, no, that she can't get it, but we'll get the answer, don't we? Same thing as with God. We are his children, and we should not be ashamed to ask him for things. Especially when you need them. When was it? It was <clears throat> a couple of days ago. God answered two prayers in the same day. Um, I had probably probably three or four pairs of pants. And and I was asking God for some pants. Because I didn't have much pants. Most of my pants I end up dirtying it or something. Or, or the button comes out. And I said to God, I was like, God, I need some pants. The next morning, my mother calls me and she tells me, I have some pants for you. I was like, okay, that's good. Probably she's going to get me a pair or two. 
And when she calls me, she says that she was going to be over in half an hour. She comes with 11 pairs of pants. And I hugged my mom. I said, thank you. And I closed the door. I sat on the floor and I just cried to God. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because I spent it. Seven hundred dollars on a book to get it published, um, and I didn't have money to buy some pants. And man, I just started crying to God, and I just started thanking Him. I was like, "Lord, I thank you. I, I thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for these eleven pairs of pants." So, there, there, there's, there's reasons. God does answer our prayers, and. I'm here to tell you, God, God is wonderful. And if he doesn't give you what you want, it's because he knows it will do you harm. And there are occasions that he has given us what we wanted. And we have seen the harm of the things that we've asked God for. That it wasn't as good as we thought it was. But there's many occasions we've asked God for things and God has not given to us. And then a year later or two and you and you, you look at it and you say, oh, thank you, Jesus, that you didn't give me that. Because if you would have given that to me, I probably wouldn't have been serving you. Or it would have gone wrong. But there's many occasions where we just have to continue persisting. Don't give up. Be like that widow. She kept on bothering that judge till that judge gave in. So she got her answer. And that's what we should do. We should we should keep on bothering God, knocking on his door till we get the answer, especially if you know if it's God's will for your life to have that. So those are my short words. God bless you, and I'll see you next program, Gains of Jesus, where we'll talk more on the gospel.